Well, they found a lot of documents, and that's in history books, but they didn't find the ark. It just happens that while they were there digging, a high pre, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the king of Ethiopia was um, in exile. There was a revolution in Ethiopia and was brought in exile to Jerusalem. And when he heard the Knights Templars were looking for the Ark, he went to them and said, I have the Ark. It's in Ethiopia. Now, how did that happen? There was a very well-known route along the Nile that went down the Nile through the Blue Nile into Lake in Ethiopia, Taos in Ethiopia. And sure enough, in Ethiopia, you find a high population of ancient Jewish tradition, which scholars never knew where the Jews came from, why they went to Ethiopia. Most likely what happened is that the Essene temple became unstable, became dangerous. It became dangerous to leave the ark there. So they decided to take it down the Nile. They did, and they eventually settled at Elephantine Island on the Nile. Um, and they found a, uh, an Hebraic temple there, which, you know, in uh, Jewish tradition, you're not supposed to build a temple unless it's the temple to place the ark in. So wherever you find an, an ancient Hebraic temple, the ark had to be there. So you find that temple in the ac appropriate times being built on Elephantine Island. And then it stayed there for a long time, hundreds of years, until it became unstable there too. So they brought it down into the Blue Nile, into Ethiopia. And in Ethiopia, on that lake, you find a very ancient Hebraic temple having been built. And all the priests there say that they used to have the Ark. And then eventually the Ark was brought to St. Mary of Zion in uh, uh, Axiom, Ethiopia, where it's supposed to be to this day. It's a little chapel that's heavily guarded by the uh, Ethiopian army. And so, the Ninth Templar actually went down the Nile and what they did is they made a deal with that king. That king actually is the father of the Rastafarian tradition. That's how deep this goes. The Rastafarian tradition is actually directly linked to the history of the Ark. And if you talk to Rastafarians that are really uh, scholarly involved, they will tell you that the Ark is the center of their uh, worship. So the Knights Templar, isn't this amazing? The Knights Templar went down the Nile with that king, and because they had the control over the European armies, said, we'll give you back your country. That's not a big problem for us. We've got guns. They have, you know, arrows and lances. And so they brought, they went down the Nile. Actually, they didn't have quite guns at the time, but they had more advanced technology than the Africans. And um, they give, they fought for that king's country, and in exchange, the king gave them access to the ark. And there in Ethiopia, you find ancient traditions that talk about blonde high, blue, uh, blonde air, blue eyed people, Europeans coming in during those years, liberating the country and building all sorts of things. Now, when, uh, when you find these things they built, you know they didn't build this with conventional means. 
because when you find the things they built in Ethiopia, you find that those are churches. One of them is a church that's a big Knights Templar cross type of structure that is not built, actually it's cut into the stone, like laser cut into the stone. And then it's cut inside it and then emptied out this huge chapel, right? um, you know, basically cut, like sculpted right out of the stone. Only one person has been able to make, to interview um, the guardian of the ark, the guardian of the ark today. One priest in Ethiopia is chosen to guard the ark. And he has to be pure of heart. And when he's chosen to guard the ark, he never leaves the chapel where the ark is. From that moment on, he stays there for the rest of his life. That high priest gave one interview, and he gave it to Graham Hancock, and it's in the book, The Sign and the Seal. And in the interview, Graham says, what is the power of the ark? And the high priest, well, first of all, he says, what was it, the first, how was it the first time you went in front of the ark? And the high priest said, it was terrifying. And Graham Hancock says, why? And he said, because the ark is an object of fire. That means it radiates. And then he said, what's the power of the ark? And the high priest pointed across from the chapel in Ethiopia. And across from that chapel in Ethiopia are huge pillars, some of them 500 tons pillars of granite that were erected, just like Egyptian obelisks. And he said, this was not done with the power of man. This was brought here with the power of the ark. So he actually says directly to Graham Hancock that the ark has gravitational capabilities. Go ahead. Um, what do you think? Is Interestingly, when they arrived in Europe, the first thing they did is that they built, you see, all of a sudden they became builders. You know, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, they could build amazing structures. The first thing they built was the first Gothic cathedral, Chartres, a huge cathedral in France. Now that cathedral has been examined by many engineers, and all the engineers agree that thing is not reproducible with current technological advancements. I mean, you're talking whole temples, all whole pyramids were covered with gold. You don't do that by mining in the middle of the desert. Okay? So, um, you know, the Ark crystal is the philosopher's stone that the alchemists were looking for. So when you um, you start, now it starts to make a whole picture different, eh? The Knights Templar could not talk about the Ark directly because the Vatican would have had their head real quick. So they had to talk about it in terms of magic, in terms of magical spell. They had all these ancient books that had description of the Ark. They started to distribute those in underground, you know, root, uh, grassroot, you know, um, uh, sectors. And all these became magical texts. That's why you see all these ancient texts appearing in the middle of Europe, like the Kabbalistic texts. And the, and, and the modern archaeologists and, and historians think, Oh, the Kabbalah came out of the 11th century in Europe. It's not, it's not.